Uh, I wanted to uh, start today by reading uh, a, a portion of the Psalms that goes with our uh, uh, Bible study. I'm going to kind of do a review uh, again of seven heaven. Let's see. No, not Psalms. It's Proverbs. Let me get over here. Uh, if you want to read along, it's Proverbs uh, 16. Okay, this... Uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you today, Lord, I just seek your presence today, Father. Um, touch my mind and my heart, my, my spirit, Father. Guard my words and may what our group today uh, hear from me be only what you want them to hear and and just uh, subtract any of the words that are necessary Father that they don't hear those things I pray for these precious group of ladies Lord I bring them before you Lord and all the needs that uh, each one of us face Father that you would just meet our your glorious riches that would you touch those that are infirm Lord or those that are dealing with uh, our th that may be grieving for whatever reason Father I pray that you would just uh, bring make yourself real and, and new to us today as you, you bring life into the scriptures as we read them today God may we honor you in everything we do. We, I just, I just feel undone and unworthy, Father. But through you, you say that we are your righteousness. So, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that you love us. Be all, all our understanding. That your mercy and your grace expound in us, Father. That you. Uh, your word said that we can do more things even through the Holy Spirit. So, Father, guide us with your spirit today and help us as we uh, seek to learn more about you and understand and take your word to our heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, hang on a second. I got to. Sorry about that, girls. I don't know what happened. Uh, okay, let me get the tears out of my eyes. Um, Proverbs 16, and I'm going to read uh, 1 through uh, 9. We can gather a thought, and this is uh, the New Living Translation. We can gather our thoughts, but the Lord gives the right answer. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Commit your work to the Lord, and then your plans will succeed. The Lord has made everything for his own purpose, even the wicked for punishment. The Lord despises pride. Be assured that the pride, proud will be punished. Unfailing love and faithfulness cover sin. 
Evil is avoided by fear of the Lord. When the ways of men please the Lord, he makes even their enemies live at peace with them. It is better to be poor and godly than rich and dishonest. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And that's been one of my go-to scriptures. Is like, in, in his, uh, the, I think the uh, King James says in his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps is uh, the way that is translated. So <clears throat> going back, uh, since it's been a couple of weeks and uh, there were some other things that I wanted to to just go back over Samuel 7. And that's where we ended right before. <laughs> uh, been a little bit. Uh, the uh, in, in First Samuel seven, uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, at that time was in uh, Kiriath Jerusalem for twenty years, uh, and then the Scripture says, uh, "When we get over there, to that." Uh, can you imagine the, uh, in verse two, it, and uh, in verse two, it says, and after that, it said, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. What do you think that means? 20 years, the Ark of the Covenant remained in uh, carry off Jehoram. And then all the house of the Lord lamented after it. What do you suppose that meant? Anybody got any ideas? Y'all are quiet today. <laughs> uh, Marilyn, uh, lament means to um, regret um mourn yes absolutely uh cry out in anguish so be, uh, they uh, they thought that god had abandoned them is that really they were mourning the loss of because the ark of the covenant was not basically in in a rightful place and so they thought God had to, uh, had abandoned them because it wasn't with them. Uh, have Have you ever felt that way? Has anybody ever felt like the Lord has abandoned them in any or certain situation in your past? No. 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 That's good. But you know, there. I think there are times, especially. Uh, maybe in a loss of a loved one, uh, if you're not strong in your faith, you can feel like the Lord has abandoned you with, and taken, you know, his presence from you. And if you're not a Christian, I think that that's how a lot of people feel. They feel lost and, and, and don't know where to turn because they don't have the spirit of the Lord in them to guide them and to comfort them. And so uh, we need to remember as Christians how uh, when people are despondent and don't feel that, uh, that they are, the God's presence is, they don't have that to reassure them. And, uh, so, uh, Carolyn, uh huh. In one translation, this is in a, a different translation. It says, "And all the people of Israel began to grieve over their separation from the Eternal One." That's kind of yes. makes it easier to understand, right? Mm -hmm. And the, and in verse three, Samuel tells them, "If you return to the Lord with all your heart," so they had moved away from God themselves. I mean, God doesn't. God's not. It doesn't change. He's 
he stays the same. But if if there's a difference in our relationship with him, it's not God that's moved; it's us that has moved. And so, uh, so he and so they had gone back to uh, worshiping foreign gods, and uh, mm -hmm. the scripture says the and the Asherah, and uh, and if they would prepare their hearts for the Lord and and serve only him that he would deliver them from the hands of the Israelites. So here they are still battling the Israelites, just like they had from uh in in chapter four and five, you know, they're still battling the Israelites. I mean the Philistines. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. They're still battling the Philistines. And uh so he tells them together at Mispha, uh so what he at the, he's telling them when they to prepare, uh, he wants them to uh, get rid of the things, just like us. We need to get rid of the things that are holding us and separating us from God. Doesn't matter what it is, whatever we put before God in our lives becomes an eye. Uh, and you know what? What are some things you think that we might use today that are distractions that take us away from t spending time in God that we could be doing, but we're doing other things? What think? What things do you think those could be if not putting God first in our lives? What are some things that the world today uses to? Uh, replace God in their lives and not put him first place. I think the telephone, the mobile yeah. cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you think about it, you, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Linda. Linda. Uh, if you think about it, Linda, if I ever just stop and think about when you go places, the grocery store, or just stopping or in a, I mean, and I know this would be true when we've gotten together with my son and, and uh, daughter-in-law family. You look around and everybody's on their phone. They're not talking to each other. They're using, they're all sitting there looking at their phones. So we're so, not talking to God either. <laughs> no. And so, or playing games on our phone. I mean, and I, I have done that or do that. You yeah, know, me so, too. It's so, you know, it, it's filler time, I guess, rather than using it to, I mean, what's a better use of our time? You know, uh, reading, the, reading the word or something that is uh, we're learning from that rather than, you know, just uh, things that waste our time. Really, and, and and I'm speaking to my about myself, not anybody else. And so, uh, God, what does God tell them to do? First, is get rid of all the things that keep you from the Lord. That's what what Samuel told them to get rid of the the foreign gods and the asherahs. Uh, so, our foreign gods and asherahs could be, you know phones or I mean it could be cars it could be houses you know the things that we put our uh, set our minds to rather than the Lord becomes those foreign gods uh, not in the same way but it it, it is uh, it, it takes a place of God in our lives and so he said get rid of those things and then uh Samuel, the last part of Samuel 3 it says, determine or set your heart to obey only the Lord. And then, then what were they supposed to do in that in verse 5? What did Samuel say? Say to the Lord. Come together and he would pray over them. And where, where are they together here? Miss Papa. Can, can anybody else and, and that's an important place can you think of so well before I get to there so they gathered at Mizpah and what were they to do they they were to fast seek repentance before the Lord 
and then they drew water and poured it out before the Lord, which was uh, depicting of their sins that they, that they have sinned against God, and that's what uh, that was uh, representative of their sins, and so that they were bound before the Lord. And so, uh, can you think of another time where Mispha was uh, mentioned? Uh, other places in the Bible where uh, Mitzvah was uh, mentioned. Yeah. Judges 21. Uh, somebody turn there and read Judges 21. Judges 20, verse 1. <clears throat> I, I can read. Okay. Then all the Israelites came out from Dan to Beersheba, including the land of Gilead, and the congregation assembled in one body before the Lord at Mitzvah. So, uh, in this particular thing, the, the people, <clears throat> God was providing the men of Israel with wives uh, for the Benjamin, Benjaminites. And so, uh, so this is a place that, uh, and then, of course, in verse 7, we see where, that's where they had gathered again at Mitzvah in, in chapter 10, verse 17, uh, that's where they gathered uh, to uh, the same we call the people together again uh, it says then Samuel called to the people together to the Lord of Mizpah and said to the children of Israel thus says the Lord of Israel I brought you up out of Israel I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all the, the kingdoms and from those who oppressed you. Uh, but you have rejected your God who himself served you from all your adversities and tribulations and you have said to him now king over us. So this is where he uh, presents uh, Saul to the people uh, as uh, their king. So Mishra is an important place in, in the uh, history of Israel. Uh, so let's so let's see what happens when they uh, come. And they poured out their offering, the water before the Lord, and they uh, ask God to forgive them, and they are. Uh, seeking the Lord's help. So when they uh, so chapter 7 who hears about them gathering all the tribes gathering together at Mizpah? The Philistines. The Philistines are our enemy again. So here they are. Uh, and so what does uh, the Israelites have asked they were afraid when they heard the Israelites were afraid when they heard that the Philistines were uh, uh, had gathered together to come against them. And so what did they ask uh, Samuel to do? Verse 8. They sacrificed a, a lamb. Offer up a burnt offering. So it's not, yes, they wanted him not to cease crying out before the Lord and, and Samuel offered a sacrifice a suckling lamb and uh, and then Samuel cried out to the Lord and uh, but as he was offering up the burnt offering what did the Philistines do? Well they went to attack Yes, and what did him what did God do? He he made them panicky. <laughs> he 
He did a few things that put the fear in them, and they <laughs> so they turned around and ran. <laughs> and what did he, what did he use to do that? Thunder. Thunder. Oh, him. thunder! Yeah. Um, not that this is any. Uh, I can remember when Jim and I were first dating. Uh, fifty three, going on fifty four years ago. Uh. We were on the front porch. He was telling me good night, and uh, and of course there was some uh, uh, kissing going on, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden there came the biggest clap of thunder. And girls, I can tell you today, I can still both of us. I mean. It scared us both so bad. I mean, it was, I mean, it, and it, the thunder, I guess there was a lightning strike because it was the biggest boom. It scared us both horribly. I can still remember today how I felt that day when that thunder uh, was struck. So, what does it do to the Philistines? It totally confuses them, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And, uh, they threw them into such confusion uh, that the it feel uh, it uh, that they were overcome before Israel and the men of Israel were able to pursue them and drove them back as far as Beth Car. And then this is we talked about this week before last, and and then Samuel took a stone and set it up between. Uh, Mizpah and Shin, and what did he he called the name the altar there? Ebenezer. And what uh, do you remember what uh, Ebenezer means? Stone, Stone of, of help. help. Stone of help. And uh, so <clears throat> the at, and then in verse thirteen it says that they were subdued and did not come anymore into the territory of Israel and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. That's that's pretty powerful, isn't it? If, and so uh the even the cities that the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored from Ekron to Gath. Now and why are those names familiar? Ekron and Gath, what? Didn't they both have the ark at one time? Yes, yes. And so they uh, they had rec recovered even those areas that had been in the hands of the Philistines. And so, uh, and scripture always also says that there was peace with Israel and the Amorites. And uh, it said Samuel judged Israel all his days. Uh, uh, to the uh, end of his life. So, um, the ha I, my thought process here is when we have seen a real victory in our lives and we, 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 when we've been out of uh, the will of the Lord, just like they were, the Israelites had been, and, uh, God does something incredible, turns our hearts back to him, and we are, are we have determined in our hearts to be obedient and and to serve, uh, you know, to re basically re rededicate our lives to the Lord that we've gotten away from him. And, or as a new Christian, <clears throat> when they turn their hearts to the Lord, you, usually what happens May not be always, but what happened to the Israelites when they turned their hearts to the Lord? The enemy came at them, didn't he? So we have to be aware when we we are surrendering to the Lord or or make a determination to let's just say you you know get up you're planning to to get up an hour earlier or that that you have determined in your heart to do this for the Lord honor him and bring draw 
closer to him in your life, the enemy will come at you. And, uh, I mean, you know, it's like you'll get a headache or, you know, I mean, have you ever been there, you know, where you determined to do something in your life and then it seems like everything comes against you to try to keep you from doing what you uh, promised God that you would do. So the enemy hates our submission and obedience to God. So just be aware if you have a, a victory in your life and or that you have uh, turned from something in your life that you are, uh, you know, is displeasing to God, the enemy will come at you and try to keep you from <clears throat> keeping that vow that you made to the Lord that you were going to do. So, uh, and someone look up First John 4, 4 and read that. This is a verse that we can use at this time. Uh, it's good to have it memorized uh, if you don't already have it memorized, but to memorize it and uh, uh, to use when the enemy comes against you. Anybody have that? First John 4, 4. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Yes. And, and not to take it out of context because at this time where uh, John was writing, it was uh, fall, talking about false teachers, but uh, but anything that keeps us from we ha we have the power in us through the Holy Spirit to overcome anything in our lives, uh, and God will guide us and direct us when we turn to Him. And I think a lot of times we don't give the Holy Spirit enough credit in turn to him and depend on him to guide and lead us just like I read in uh, Proverbs 16 9 it's like in his heart a man plans his course but the Lord determines his steps we can go uh, we can be assured that whatever we go to do God's going to guide us and that we have the power through the Holy Spirit to overcome situations in our life but it's just it's just sometimes pushing in and and crying out even a heart uh with more uh diligence to cry out to the lord to help have him help us to overcome any situation that we don't know how to deal with so now <clears throat> we're going to uh Marilyn, this was, yeah. this is Marsha. I just wanted to interject here because we read all about this and we read, you know, and it's, and it's in context today when you hear it can just replace the Palestinians with the Philistines attacking Israel. Yeah. And um, I just, I mean, it just seems like it's just a constant battle with what, what I've always been told is, is the chosen people of Israel. Yeah. But um, kind of a praise thing that I just heard on the news this morning is Dallas Baptist University students were over there visiting the Holy Land. And uh, right in the middle of all that in their bus, that's when everything was being attacked. But, you know, praise God that they made it home. So they had to be kept there three days somewhere. But um, the Lord does work in miracles every day. But I mean, you just you read about all these battles and that's what we're doing and it's still existing today yes and and we should be mindful of the uh i mean we get busy with our lives and all that but there's a world greater around us that god is working through and sometimes i think we forget that and this week this this last week has been a reminder of just how much evil is still going in the world and, and what God what we're studying here is true honey sorry we told him you're cooking <laughs> Jim's putting dishes up and it's rattled I'm sorry for the distraction um, 
but I lost my thought. I mean, the, the things that are happening right now in our world is proof that the enemy is still attacking uh, uh, God's people. And God will make a way for Israel. He, I mean, he, he always keeps that remnant. And, and there's not a whole lot more things that need to take place uh, before um, Jesus' return. I think his, I think it's pretty imminent uh, of him taking the church out. And I was reading that, <clears throat> and I, I, I won't, don't quote me on this because, but it was, I was reading about the, when it says that Jesus would come back and put his feet on the Mount of Olives, uh, there, I mean, it's supposed to be, some part of that is buried Sorry. under, um, I don't know how many, uh, how much thickness of, of concrete and stuff. But you know, it's not going. I mean, it it take would take nothing for God to uh, destroy, you know, the things that that concrete uh, in just you know with thunder, or lightning, or whatever, you know, because He has control of all the elements. I mean, He made it all, and so there's not anything that uh, God can't do. Uh, to bring about his will for the world. So, at the beginning, anybody else have anything they wanted to say? Thank you for that, Marcia. Anybody else have any thoughts on chapter seven? Uh, so the Philistines would have been Canaanites? Uh, yes, the Amor um the Can they lived, the Amorites is the general name for the Canaanites of that time, but the Philistines lived in that area also. And weren't the Israelites told to kill all the inhabitants? And because they did not look at where they are uh -huh, today, right. because uh -huh. those who live in the Gaza Strip are probably most likely descendants of the Canaanites. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, in fact, that was, I was going to comment this, remember before we started the book of Judges, all the time we spent on the instructions from uh, the book of Deuteronomy and Joshua on what the Israelites were to do uh, when they got into the promised land. And we also, of course, studied what they didn't do. And I'm sitting here thinking, and I was trying to find where I heard, uh, where it is, and I'm not quoting it exactly. So Barbara, help me here if you remember, Marilyn. <laughs> the sins of the fathers are visited on the sons. Yeah. And the Israelites today, and this is simplistic to say it this way, but the Israelites today are still paying, and the whole world is still paying for what they didn't do according to the Bible, back when they entered the Holy Promised Land. It always struck me in an interesting way how uh, we as Christians in the New Covenant are taught to be missionaries, to go out and convert and bring people to Jesus Christ. But it was totally the opposite mm -hmm. in the Old Testament because God told Joshua when you again, I can't, I, I can't quote chapter and verse. Never could, but but the basic idea is God said, you know, okay, this is your land, but you got to wipe everybody out, okay. And He didn't want them to do missionary work. He wanted the the bad guys gone, and then build build up the the chosen race to be a pure, holy uh, uh, group of people. And but by staying uh, in the land and not getting rid of, they got rid of the ones that were fighting them. But they let everybody else live. So obviously, maybe not the first generation, but you know there's going to be intermarriage. And when they get the intermarriage, 
then they start putting the gods together and the israelites say oh that's a nice that's a nice ceremony i think we need to try that or oh they're praying so that you get that mixture of the pure uh religion that of yahweh uh mixed in with baal and all those other gods and and so yeah so that started the whole mess and uh they didn't follow what god said that should be a really good lesson to the rest of the world for eternity but unfortunately we haven't paid still haven't paid that much attention so yeah and barbara, barbara and <clears throat> why did god tell them to get rid uh, to, to kill all the people they took the land why did he why right. did he tell so i'm sorry so what why did god tell them to to kill all the people in the land well, because he wanted the world to have a pure, his pure, they were God's chosen people. And he wanted them to literally rule the world or be the world. But by not killing them, they infiltrated and, and became um, a mixed mixed group. Because of the so other gods that they served. Of the other gods. Exactly. Gods. And so, and not only, if you can't just infiltrate. Okay, and then say, okay, A is the Canaanites. They can have their religion, and B will have our religion. doesn't work that way. They're going to intermingle. They're going to intermarry. That's the big issue. Mm -hmm. They're going to intermarry. And, uh, you know, I've seen, I think we've all seen that in friends and everything else. I have seen, you know, families where uh, a, a Jewish person will marry a Christian and uh, they decide to compromise. So neither religion really gets, you know, the stuff. Now, some do where I know one sitting right in front of us, who oh, it does work, okay? But that is more than often not, not the case to the point that I have seen several families have kind of given up their religion because mm -hmm. they, don't, can't, they can't settle on one, one, one uh, practice, okay? And so they kind of forget religion. Uh, and so that's what God, I mean, God knew that was going to happen. And, and so mm -hmm. he wanted that to stop and not to happen. But yeah. it didn't work that way. Um, Marilyn, I was looking up, it's back, even way back in Deuteronomy. I was looking at chapter 30. Moses told the people, and this is where they're on the other side of the Jordan. They can see the promised land, but they haven't crossed over yet. And as you know, Deuteronomy is Moses' final word to the people. And he's telling them there that if you don't get rid of all these people, you will be turned away from God. God knew that we aren't strong enough on our own to resist evil. And so therefore you have to get rid of temptation. Right. And, I, uh, you know, to, like Barbara said, they intermingled and they married into other tribes and that. And so Moses was warning them even before they crossed into the promised land that if they didn't obey God and get rid of the people, God knew they were going to turn away from him. Yes. And I mean, even back as far as, <clears throat> from what you said about you know them not turn uh, go back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden and everything was perfect and no sin but yet a Satan uh, came to them and you know and and they were weak without God in our lives and even with God a lot of times we make the wrong choices uh because our you know our faith is not what it needs to be a lot of times so the enemy is always after us and uh, to turn aside to um uh, well like barbara said infiltrate but to weaken the resolve the the strength that we have uh i can remember times when i was far stronger in the Lord, I think my faith is is deeper because of what I've seen God do through my life. But there were times when 
when I wasn't obedient to do the things I knew to do. And, uh, but as I've seen the Lord deliver me through situations that some of it was uh, life that happened and, but, and, and not my choice. Other things were my choice, but through all of that, I've seen God strengthen me in my resolve and in, in, in my uh, faith in him as I've seen him deliver me through different things and uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jim's distracting me. Uh, but I, I know that uh, it uh, God, God just matures us as we go through things in our life and as the enemy comes in, just like as the enemy came in to uh, the, the, through the Philistines into. Hold on just a moment, please. Your dog. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, as God has done things in my life that I knew no one but God, it was it was only God that could have done those things. So it it I've seen Him rescue me time and time again and strengthen me through those times of adversity when I didn't know what to do, and so. Uh, and that's, I think, as we, we trust him and mature in him. And I think that, that as we're looking at the Philistines okay. here, uh, he, he, for the rest of Samuel's life, he gave them peace uh, with uh, and restored things that had been lost to them. And uh, so here now, at uh, all the days of Samuel's life, uh, he judged Israel, and every year is it at the last he went uh, on circuit from year to year to Bethel, Gilgal, Mizpah, and judged all of Israel and all those places. But he always returned to where his home. Who, where was his home? Ramah. Ramah, and then uh, and he judged uh, Israel, and he it says he built an altar. Uh, and there he built an altar at Ramah. So now, uh, Marilyn, uh -huh. Marilyn, excuse me, could I just say one thing? Yes, ma'am. Um, I think it's important that we remember God never moves away from us. Absolutely. We move away from God. Yes. And this is what the Israelites, I'm going to say, never learned. <laughs> you know, um, they moved away from God. We do it today. Right. But God is right off there always beside us. But we are the ones that move away. I remember the song, Greatest of Faithfulness. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou uh, changes not, thy uh, compassions they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. He is faithful always. And he yes. is firm. He's our foundation. He's the rock upon which we stand. He is immovable. Right. He does, and so we he doesn't lie. So we can always trust his word and what he says. And uh and and if we feel God is distant, it's not Him that moved; it's us. It's us. And, uh, Marilyn, um, Barbara has something she wants to say. Okay. I think there's another force here that we have not mentioned, but is so real, uh, and is is worse than the uh, infiltration or the mingling or whatever you want to call it of the uh, Canaanites with the Israelites. The devil is still around. He was around yeah. in those days and he's still around. Now, the devil is an angel. 
So he was pretty smart. And uh, the angels have been above us, okay, intellectually, uh, what they're able to do physically, etc. The day will come, we know, in the new kingdom, when the humans will be above the angels. We get that from Revelation. But right now, they're a pretty powerful, the devil's a pretty powerful force. So uh, that is the relationship where that guy's trying to get in and, and get to us as individuals or as a group. And uh, so uh, we, and he is the one who is in, in there, you know, stirring all this stuff up and nothing pleases the devil more than for God to lose the soul. Uh, you know, that, that's the whole point of his existence. And so I think we need to remember that. And, and I, it's something I never forget. I, my parents gave me a book as a child of pictures and had the most horrible, horrible picture of hell and the devil. And since then, one of my prayers constantly is, God, keep the devil away from me. And because I think he presents sources of temptation that are what trouble us terribly. And we have to be very strong in our faith and not just his faith. But I feel we need to ask God every day. Uh, it's in the Lord's Prayer, you know, do not lead us into temptation. And so I think it's very important that we, because frequently I'll get a temptation, you know, and it'll dawn on me. That's the devil talking and I will turn away and I will swear at the devil, you know, because I'm saying, you know, get away from me, get out of my sight. I don't want to hear from you. Uh, and I think we have to fight. We're not fighting the Philistines, okay? Uh, we're not fighting the Palestinians, okay? But we're fighting that monster that's there and looking for any sign of weakness we could possibly have. We need to remember that. Yes, and, and well, and he has his minions. I mean, oh yeah, Satan, Lucifer, was <clears throat> was an archangel, so he knew the workings of the whole thing and pride <clears throat> and wanting to be higher than God better than God was was his it? downfall and so we have to and I said I, I just read that last night uh, you know uh, pride uh, uh, pride goes fall. before destruction and then what does he it goes before fall uh, pride pride proceeds a fall Yes, and that was actually, uh, I mean, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but that was uh, that was uh, what Satan tempted Adam and Eve with. Did yeah. God really say that you would, you know, uh, he caused them to doubt in, in the, and it was a sin of pride. They wanted, you know, uh, but if they, they wanted to be uh, like God, I mean, that was what Satan tempted them with. And he tempts us today with so i think we we have to keep our i mean that's where god tells us to be humble our humility you know not to be prideful in uh in the things that uh we can do or uh, uh be but rather uh give glory to god in our submission to know that uh, uh it's it's given by the Lord to us for our benefit and 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 the benefit of others and to bring Jane, him glory not not for ourselves. Jane was trying to ask something to say. I just wanted to to add on to what y'all both have just spoken about. And I mean at the end of the day, what we really have to always remember is this is not a battle of man against man. This right. is a battle of of pure evil against pure yes. goodness in the spiritual yes. realm and and you know a great place to read we all know this ephesians 6 you know put on the full armor of god every day because mm -hmm. the, the evil one is out there and he knows our weakness yeah. and he capitalizes on it if we let him mm -hmm. and, but we all have to remember god is <laughs> in omnipresent but satan is not he's not all powerful he's not right. all knowing He's no. not, but, but he knows the weakness of the human spirit. Yes, he, and he will capitalize that on, if we let him do that. 
And, <laughs> and I wish, you know, my prayer is we don't talk enough about that. And a lot of people, I don't mean that we should focus on that, but a lot of people, I think, especially those getting new into their faith and growing in their faith, they don't know a lot about the evil side of this world. I mean, he is the, he is the prince of this world mm -hmm. and they don't know that. And so they're not prepared for some of the things that can happen. And so I pray that we, we can broaden, we, I mean, all Christians throughout the world, church leaders and so forth will help teach the flock, the full word of the Bible from cover to cover. Um, we also need to remember that what we're li living for is the future heavenly life that we will all achieve. Remember, the devil came to Jesus and tempted him. He offered him everything here on earth that he could be the ruler of all this. And Jesus turned it down, you know, because he, he knew that there was more. And too often we're putting so much value on our daily lives or what we are achieving now here on earth and forgetting our eyesight should be towards the heavenly future. Yes. Sure. And uh, anybody else have anything they want to add to that? Um, yeah, Marilyn, sometimes when I'm praying, I ask God for a hedge of protection for mm -hmm. all of my family members, and I, I name them by name when I do that. I do, too. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is important that we, uh, well, just like we had testimony at the beginning that Jane shared, of, uh, when it, Jane, you shared about the the family and the girl that is is doing uh, she was doing better. Who was that? You said she was doing what? The 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 praise of the who was it? You that shared the praise of the people for? Oh uh, oh yes, a Barbara's friend. Oh and, my, oh Jesse, yes. Do that before you mm -hmm. got it, Barbara. Yeah. yeah. She's uh she's doing so much. And, and my uh, dear friend, we grew up together, been friends for seventy two years, and she uh, she knows our our root pray for is still pray for her husband Jean, and uh, a, a thank you to the card ministry. She said sent the most beautiful beautiful note to them, and her husband is quite religious. Her her brother was a Catholic priest. But anyway, uh, she said, we did such a good job. Would we please pray for her granddaughter who has severe anxiety problems? And it's, I guess it's about three weeks since I asked you to first pray for her. And she's already there. They've gotten good medical help and all. And she's already coming out of that. And and my friend Ann was just, she said, please tell your group, thank you, because we're on the road to recovery. And, and the, she said, the changes since they hooked her up with the right psychiatrist and all that. And so, you know, so yeah, you know, when we, when we put our minds together and pray, we can be a real force. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had a lot of luck in our praying as a group. Uh, and no, it's not luck. It's that, right. <laughs> it's that we're doing it right. And God's listening and, and God says, you know, I'm going to help these girls out. And so uh, it's a beautiful thing. And we well, have to remember that in our prayer to praise God when he does come through. Uh, and, and well, he always comes through, just as always come through in the time we'd like him to come through. But uh, we need to acknowledge that. That's very important. And I, excuse me, Meryl. I was just going to say, I was taught to start out my prayers thanking God. Mm -hmm. Because we so often just start asking them for all these things we need mm -hmm. or we think we need or we think somebody else needs and we never bother to say thank you and <laughs> that's true with our daily living with our friends and everybody yeah. we always need to remember to say thank you i always try to use the x yeah mm -hmm. that's what i was looking at too marilyn acknowledge confession 
thanksgiving and supplication. Yeah. So we acknowledge who God is. And God loves to hear uh, his word prayed back to him, His the scriptures. Uh, and so I, I, that's one of the things I always try to do is, is uh, you know, as, as the spirit leads me to, you know, any memory verse that I have memorized, but to, you know, and that's why I mentioned uh, two or three, three weeks ago about uh, praying the names of God and just uh, going through the ABCs of who God is. He's our Adonai, and uh, he's a blessed one of Israel. You know, just go, uh, you know, he's our comforter, our comforter. Um, so you can just go through those names and you know that puts you when when you start as uh marlene said as you uh pray to god and uh acknowledge who he is it puts us the spirit of worship and a raw takes our mind off of everything around us and brings him closer to us in our mind that changes from all the things that's trying to come in at this, but just you know, and being still and and just letting the Holy Spirit bring those names of Him, so that we can pray it back to Him and put us in a right spirit to come into uh, God's presence, and and then and to confess any known sin and. Uh, that we have a, there's a, an attitude or if we got upset with someone yesterday that we hadn't actually just truly uh, acknowledged our part in it and, and confessed to the Lord that I could handle this different or, I, you know, whatever it might have been, or I was sharp in and how I responded uh, to, to a certain situation. And then, uh, that's the confession, and then the T is thanking God. Be thankful at, for, uh, you know, the blessings that God gives us, a, 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 a home, and, you know, running water, the, the air conditioning, you know, whatever the things that we think that are necessary are needed, and they're not. They are blessings that we have that... Uh, we could we could survive without. I mean, you think of all the uh, other people in the world that don't have the things that we have. So we're very blessed, and so thanking God for those blessings from you know, uh, plus our children and how God works the situation out. And then after we've done those things, is the S and the X supplication for other people bring our request to the Lord uh, and uh, what is it I'm, I'm trying I, I, I've got two th things going through my mind but it's you know bring your the, your uh, uh, supplication to the Lord and, and, and pray for others that we that know the needs that we have on are and so many times we just you know we just will uh, tell the lord you know we like uh marlene said we just go to the lord and start demanding or barbara one said uh you know demanding our, our needs you know and but we have to be in the right spirit i think for god to really move but as in what does scripture say where two or four are gathered in saying there he is in the midst so as a, a Bible study group, these women, as we pray and come together in one accord, the power of the Holy Spirit is released and it, and God hears even greater, I think, just like praying, uh, for, what, what's her name, uh, Barbara? Excuse me, from what? The girl's name. Jesse. 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 Uh, praying for Jesse. You know, there's power in numbers. I mean, in it, mo it, it moves God's heart for us to do those things. To, uh, 
when there's such a need. I mean, I can remember back. Marilyn, Marilyn we're just about out of time. time. Okay. It's 12.15, right. so. so uh, let's, uh, uh, thank you for all the participation today. And again, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, 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 and be blessed for our coming week. Father, uh, I'm undone with, with your goodness and your mercy in our lives. Father, I pray that as we leave this group today, that you will go uh, out through us and among us and in us, Lord, to do your will, to bring glory to your name. Lord, may we, may we continue to pray and seek your face and to, to move. We, we pray, God, for Israel today. Pray that your continuing presence will uh, guide the government there. Lord, and we just pray, Father, for your coming. Lord, I, I feel it's imminent, and I just pray, Father, that you, you would help us to keep our uh, lamps filled with oil and our, our wicks trimmed, and that our light would shine bright for you this week. In Jesus' Christ, in his holy name, amen. 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 Thank, thank you, Mary. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.